The Wii Shop channel. If you were one of the 100 million people who purchased a Nintendo Wii, I'm sure that you've downloaded more than a few things from this online store. But sadly, today marks the end of the Wii Shop channel. Nintendo has decided to put the service to rest after over a decade of serving digital content to Nintendo Wii owners. Beginning today, you will no longer be able to download any of the virtual content hosted on the Wii Shop, including past purchases that you have made. So naturally, I thought that today would be the best time to take a look back at the Wii Shop channel. In this video, we will be discovering the origins of this online shop back in 2006, and what features it brought to Nintendo Wii owners over the years. The Wii Shop channel was one of the first four channels that was bundled with the Wii when it launched in November of 2006. However, users could not access the service until one month later in December. This was Nintendo's first foray into selling digital goods, predating the eShop by about five years. When it launched, the Wii Shop channel allowed players to purchase additional content that was not sold on physical media, beginning with 12 different virtual console titles. These titles were older Nintendo games, titles that were originally released on consoles ranging from the NES to the N64. Eventually, Nintendo added more titles to this collection, bringing the total number of games available to 30 by the end of 2006. Nintendo later on added games from non-Nintendo consoles to the Wii Shop, including titles from the Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, NEC's TurboGrafx-16, and even the Commodore 64. To to purchase one of these old games to play on your Wii, you would have to fund your account with Wii Points. Nintendo chose not to give items in the Wii Shop a simple dollar value, and instead opted to create their own digital currency of sorts. Wii Points could either be purchased by using your credit card or debit card on the Wii Shop channel, or by going to a physical retail store to buy a card pre-loaded with Wii Points. The minimum amount of points that you could purchase at one time was 1,000, which was equivalent to 10 US dollars. The maximum amount was 5,000, equivalent to 50 US dollars. Virtual console titles ranged anywhere from 500 to 1,200 Wii Points, with most of the NES titles costing 500. So if you only wanted to purchase one NES title, say Super Mario, Mario Brothers 3 for instance, you would have to spend $10 to fund your account with 1000 Wii points. You could not simply purchase that one title. When downloaded, Virtual Console titles would appear as an additional channel on the system menu. When launched, the channel screen would show some basic information about the game, including its name, year of release, number of players supported, and what console it originally ran on. The Wii did a great job at emulating these older titles, and they played just as one would expect them to. However, you obviously could not use the original controller. Most of the NES games could be played with the Nintendo Wii remote turned on its side, while most of the N64 titles required either the classic controller or a GameCube controller. For the most part, virtual console titles were available for purchase until March 26, 2018, when Nintendo began the process of slowly discontinuing the Wii Shop. But old games were not the only thing that could be purchased from the Wii Shop channel. Eventually, Nintendo created additional Wii channels that could be downloaded from the Wii Shop, most of them being free. These included the Check Me Out channel, Everybody Votes channel, the Nintendo channel, and the Internet channel. The Check Me Out channel, known as the Mii Contest channel in Japan, allowed the player to access a community of other Wii players to exchange Mii characters. There was also a contest element built into the channel as well, which allowed players to rate other people's Mii's or submit their own to be critiqued. If you really liked somebody's Mii character, you could actually download it to your own console and even use it in any game that supported Mii characters. The Everybody Votes channel was a channel all about polls and voting. It was unexpectedly launched by Nintendo in February of 2007, not being officially announced anywhere prior. When launched, the channel would display a list of open polls that could be voted on. 
The polls were usually simple questions, either trivia or opinion based, that had two answer choices. For example, you might see a question that says, do you use an online social networking service? Or, how long does a typical bar of soap last? When the poll closed, the channel would display the results by using me characters standing on a pie chart to represent the amount of people who voted for either choice. Users could also predict which answer choice would win before the poll's closing, and even submit their own questions to be voted on by others. The Nintendo channel was specifically dedicated to news. When this channel was opened, it would display the latest gaming news right from Nintendo. Players could read news articles, watch videos, and even play demo versions of Nintendo DS games via DS Download Play. These three channels, along with the weather and news channels, were discontinued by Nintendo on June 28, 2013, when they stopped supporting Wii Connect 24, a service that these channels relied on to function. The last original channel that was available for download from the Wii Shop was the Internet Channel. This channel, as the name suggests, allowed Wii users to browse the web. The browser itself was based on Opera, who also helped to create the Nintendo DS web browser, which was actually sold at retail stores on a cartridge. Unlike the previous three channels, the Internet Channel can still be used to this day, although you are going to have the best possible web browsing experience because the browser is based specifically on Opera 9, which was released in 2006. Back then, this was perfectly usable. I specifically remember using the internet channel to watch YouTube videos back in 2008 or so. Some companies even created special web pages specifically designed for the internet channel. One of those companies was Google, who created a version of Google Reader that was formatted to work better on the internet channel. Later on, they also created a version of YouTube for the internet channel called YouTube XL. If a user tried to access YouTube.com from either a Wii or a PlayStation 3, the site would automatically redirect the user to the YouTube XL interface. Eventually, Google decided to create a dedicated YouTube Wii channel instead that was added to the Wii shop for download. Later on, Netflix, Amazon Video, and Hulu channels were added as well. The internet channel was the only channel on the Wii shop to cost money, specifically 500 Wii points, but Nintendo later made the channel free to use on September 1st, 2009. I would know because I paid 500 Wii points to get the channel before then. Another unique feature of the internet channel was that it could be used with a keyboard, which makes the channel way easier to use as as using a Wii remote to type out website addresses can get pretty tedious. In addition to Virtual Console and Wii channels, Nintendo offered a third category of software called WiiWare. This category of games was not originally on the Wii Shop, but was added a little over two years later in the spring of 2008. This category of software did not offer older games, but brand new titles specifically designed for the Wii. These games would cost anywhere from 500 to 1500 Wii points, and could be purchased and downloaded just like Virtual Console titles and Wii channels. WiiWare was somewhat similar to both Xbox Live Arcade and the PlayStation Store, in that games released on it were smaller and did not contain as much content as a game you would purchase at a retail store. Because of this, it was seen as a lower cost entry into the video game industry by smaller development teams with lower budgets, and was even advertised as such by Nintendo. To develop WiiWare titles, development teams would have to purchase a $2,000 kit and be approved by Nintendo. However, some developers criticized WiiWare due to its game file size limit. WiiWare titles that were released on the Wii Shop channel could not exceed 40 megabytes in size. This led to some developers, including Super Meat Boy developer Team Meat, cancel their WiiWare version of the game entirely. In an interview with GamesIndustry.biz, Tommy Refinus of Team Meat commented on the file size limit, saying, Super Meat Boy would have been on WiiWare if we could have had just a few more megabytes of space. You can only compress stuff so much before you have to start cutting out huge parts of the game. Unfortunately, at that point, it just isn't worth the time. Years later, when the 3DS eShop was launched, Nintendo raised this game file size limit to a more adequate 2 gigabytes. In addition to WiiWare itself, developers could also opt to sell additional DLC for games. This was implemented by a couple of game developers and cost anywhere between 100 to 800 Wii points per DLC. 
On September 29th, 2017, Nintendo, in a press release, announced their intention to discontinue the Wii Shop channel. This process was executed fairly slowly over the course of 16 months. March 27th, 2018 was the first cutoff date. On this date, Wii Points could no longer be purchased and added to accounts, but players could still use existing Wii Points to purchase titles as well as download free and previously purchased software. The Wii Shop channel remained online until today, January 30th, 2019. Today marks the end of the Wii Shop's 12 year long journey, as it will no longer be accessible to users. However, any virtual console or WiiWare titles that are already downloaded to your Wii will remain functional as long as they are not deleted from the system's memory. So if you're still using your Wii to enjoy NES classics like Metroid or Super Mario Bros. 3, just be sure to never delete them from your system because they will not be accessible anymore after that. So that's the story. The story of an online service that introduced us to new and exciting games and at the same time helped to reconnect us with classics from the past. But even though that the Wii Shop is being killed off today, its legacy will live on in its successor, the Nintendo eShop, which hopefully will remain online for years to come. That's all for today's video. I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. And a little side note, today is my ninth anniversary of creating this channel, so thank you for nine amazing years. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and get subscribed. And as always, I will see you in the next video.